Jack Ambler, Island Water Technologies. I'm here to talk to you about uh, our sensor technology uh, for the real-time uh, digitization of wastewater treatment uh, processes. So just about the company, uh, we were founded back in 2013 in Prince Edward Island, Canada. Um, we've been working on bioelectrode uh, transfer and fixed film treatment processes at our company. Uh, Dr. Patrick Kiley and myself actually started working on the core technology of this uh, of the sensor back in 2008 when he was doing his postdoc and I was doing my master's at uh, Penn State University. And for the last four and a half years, we've been uh, developing it uh, internally and with a formal product release in uh, 2018. So the problem statement uh, from discussion with operators, um, they're quite worried about uh, how, does, how does my load to my system change uh, with time and is my process currently able to set up in to process this? Um, this is most important for the biological aspects of, of any wastewater treatment process. It's processes. It's very hard to uh, upscale or, or downscale their operation. It's not as easy to turn on like a new, a new train like it is for a chemical or physical process. And messing up these biological systems can, and can be a real barrier for, for costs. So we estimate around uh, up to basically 175,000 uh, euro uh, per event. Um, this is very client specific, but essentially, you know, reseeding the reactor operation and maintenance and pulling it down, um, perhaps environmental compliance uh, fees or um, loss in tippage fees or loss in biogas production. So these can be quite expensive and difficult to bring back up. And what we're trying to, basically there, there isn't any tools really available to give this information to the, to the um, operator in, in real time. So just talk about the technology for a second. Um, it's, a, it's very similar to a microbial fuel cell, if anyone's familiar with that type of technology. Um, bioelectrochemical system, we have an anode and a cathode, an electro pair you put directly into the wastewater. Um, the organic matter is consumed by biology. We, we apply a small voltage across the, uh, the electrode pair. Um, bacteria in the stream can actually grow on, um, on the anode and you get a representative community of wherever it's, wherever it's placed. Um, and then we can, as they um, metabolize and as they breathe, uh, they can actually breathe to our anode as opposed to uh, an electron, uh, final electron acceptor like oxygen or a nitrate. Um, and we can just count those electrons as they go through our circuit. So we get uh, a real-time uh, metabolic activity of, of the biology on the anode. So just some of the places we've uh, been installing it for influent toxic shock monitoring, process control, effluent monitoring. Um, and we're using it uh, currently as, as kind of like a key process or key input to AI and, and smart algorithms. Um, we've installed in wastewater treatment plants and anaerobic digesters, and we have a general uh, electrical safety certification. So just talk to you a little bit about the data that the, that the sensor produces. Uh, there's kind of three levels of the data. The first level is just instantaneous. You see a large, the biology sees a large change. Um, you immediately get a response. So on the left-hand side, that's you know, a steady state signal. Um, and then we have a large response um, followed by a, a characterized uh, decrease. So you're getting both an idea of um, how bad that shock was to the system and how long it might be affecting the biology in the system. The second lo level is just uh, aggregating all the data over time. Um, and what that does is you can, so this is, a, this is of an anaerobic digester and we've just said how, how does the, how do biology respond throughout the day? And, and for them, they were taking daily samples. So this is especially valid to them saying there's a 7% change uh, over that time, which you're not accounting for in your daily sampling. Um, and we can also use this data to kind of figure out a background state for the wastewater what's normal and then flag abnormal events, which I'll talk about in, in a second with one of our case studies. Um, the third level data is we can take in uh, data from a plant, uh, VFA, BOD style data, and correlate it with our sensors output. Um, and just generally to think about that, as, as you increase uh, organic strength in wastewater, your metabolic activity increases. So we tend to see a either, not always a linear trend, but certainly uh, an increase with an increase. So a, a positive trend. Just to show you an anaerobic digestion install. Um, in this case, we're down here in a recirculation loop. We can, we can install sensors in, in, inside pipes. We can install them directly into the reactors. We can install them into open chains or into open flow areas. Um, the recirculation loop's a great spot for this because we're just seeing the same conditions that the biology inside the reactor are seeing. So this is a good location to install it. We tend to find the end-to-end -end solution. So we'd actually, our, our uh, panel sends uh, data up to a, a secure website and then onto a dashboard for display uh, for the operators and for ourselves. 
So this is a sensor installed at, the, at a municipal wastewater treatment plant up in Canada. Um, so we have it in the influent and effluent again. They're using the influent to, to figure out BOD loading to the system. They're using the influent to figure out how are their toxic uh, compounds from industrial uh, ADs, or sorry, industrial breweries, industrial um, meat processing facilities. How do they impact uh, the system, the biology in the system? Um, they can use this information to figure out what's going on um, to the B, what's going down to the BNR process. Do we have sufficient carbon to um, to run both the uh, denitrification and the uh, biological phosphorus removal? Um, so they're using this information to generate a baseline and flag it. And they can use this also to kind of figure out what, when's a good time to do uh, maintenance, what time of the year, what time of the month, what time of the day, when can I bring down a process train and not, and not, uh, not during a time when there's a, uh, the, the most demand on the system. So this is the effluent. Um, pretty, effluent's pretty easy normally. Um, Left-hand side, you can quite see a st steady, stable state. Uh, so this is good, very low activity, low, and low BOD. Um, and I kind of want to just show this to just show the benefit of real-time data. So um, we're seeing, we can see the uptick in, in, in effluent and we can see the day it happened. We can see, you know, the patterns in it. Can, can we can match that to influence, uh, high influent conditions. We can match that to certain conditions. And you're not just grabbing a one-off a one sample point because, you know, clearly if you grab the sample point from down here or here, you might have a whole different idea of how your plant's actually performing. And even composites would just be a, you know, an average this time of, of a section of this. So um, this just shows you kind of the real time aspects of it and, and some of the benefits of that. This is um, just a shot of our dashboard on an old iMac, I guess, or something. But um, you can just quick selection screens, you can pull up the data you wanna look at, you can overlay data, we can get you custom alerts if what, depending on what's important to you. Uh, big spikes are often important. Uh, we can, you can add notes to, to try to look back. So people, when they look back at the data, they can say, oh, this event was tied to that. Um, we can, so it ends up being customized. We really want this to be whatever each client needs it to be, uh, depending on their install location. So we've got 13 installs to date. Um, I pulled a, a couple of them out here just to show you guys. I'll, I'll walk through a few of them here. Um, so. I'll start with CNET in Canada. Uh, they're doing municipal AD monitoring. They've got uh, basically a, a one anaerobic digester getting pretreated waste, which they're, they're testing a pretreatment method, and they've got probes in both reactors to see uh, what's the increase in performance, how, how does this change, how the biology are responding to it. Um, Charlottetown and Montague wastewater treatment plants, both for influent and effluent BOD style monitoring, and they're very concerned about uh, industrial uh, contributions. Charlottetown, for example, is very prone to infiltration for water, so they like to figure out, uh, our sensor can kind of pick up, hey, there's a, a, a really re reduced strength uh, wastewater coming through here, and just figuring out kind of uh, not only the effect, but also the duration of this. Thousands Oaks, they're using it for, um, City Thousand Oaks in, in US, they're using it for carbon loading for denitrification, so they're doing supplemental carbon addition. So we're using our sensor to figure out what times of the day do they need to, sit? rather than just dosing an amount all the time, we can tell them what time of day they're outside of their BOD to a TKN ratio. Um, so we've been able to help them with their, with their carbon dosing optimization. OCWA, Ontario Clean Water in Canada, that's water TOC monitoring. So that, that's actually a bit of a research for us. We primarily do stuff in wastewater, but this is, that was a water install and they're looking at just um, using it as a TOC meter and flagging um, event, uh, upset events coming into their system. Uh, digester Doc, um, they're using it for, uh, to, to do biomethane potential and treatability studies of, of waste, wastes potentially being added to municipal AD clients. So they are, um, they're helping screen those uh, with this technology. Yeah, and I think um, these are things I've already hit on. This is a bit of a summary slide. Low costs, um, and I think really important to stress is the easily added to existing plants. As I'll talk about in a second, um, we just want to get these into systems and then so we'll provide a uh, basically a free trial for this for uh, 30 to 60 days. Um, and it's just so easy to add in. It takes two hours, you get it right in. We're not asking you to switch the whole process around or any of these, you know, for other types of technology. We're just, try we're just trying to get into the system. Um, can give you a superior understanding, helps you optimize your system, and can help you feed this data into an AI smart uh, type application. Um, and really, uh, yeah, it allows you to understand and quantify both known and unknown events. So those are important. I think we, a lot of times we think we know how uh, certain uh, compounds or return streams or uh, 
anything is affecting your biology, but we don't actually know, and now we actually have something to quantify it. So it's picking up stuff that you know that you don't know and stuff that you don't know that you don't know. Um, <laughs> so next steps would be just um, project planning. We'd just get on a call with uh, your technical team, um, figure out a, a good application for it, good, a good fit. We'd send out a, a free uh, cost, uh, no, no cost demonstration. Um, 30, 60 days, you have it installed. If you, we'll talk with you the data, we'll give you a preliminary report. If that stuff's of interest, then you can keep it. Uh, if not, then you can, you, know, you can keep it and we can uh, talk payment. And, and if it's not, then you can send it back and, and there's no uh, risk to you. So thank you very much. Um, take your questions now.